Welcome everyone to episode 33 of Single Mulch Strategy. Uh, this is an interview episode. I'm here with the art director of Polyslash, uh, Susanna. Welcome to the show. How are you doing? I am fine, thank you. And these are the guys that are making the uh, upcoming innovative game called We the Revolution. And uh, thanks for coming on the show. I've been wanting to get you on the show for quite uh, for, for as soon as I saw the game because it's uh, I got a chance to play it and it's it's a really really incredible uh, innovative game and. Um, I just wanted to know my first question right out of the gate. I got to ask is how old is your studio? Is it, are you guys a, like a brand new studio or have you made previous titles? How did you guys all uh, come together? Well, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me here. I'm very glad to be talking to you. And as for the studio, we are fairly fresh, but we are not like uh, just, just born. It's we've ex existed for about three and a half years. It was founded in November 2015. And the studio itself is fairly small, like the main roster is eight to nine people. And we all, well, we have outsourced artists and writers and so on that pop up every now and then, but we are too small to keep up a big roster 20 to 24-7. Okay, and uh, the last three years you've been uh, working j uh, on this game? Two and a half years, yeah. Like it's been with the revolution uh, all, day, all day long. Wow, okay, wow. And uh, you're, uh, I believe the uh, the game is close to release. I know you guys were planning for, um, uh, I think on Steam it says March. Yep, it's coming out next month on 21st March, if I remember correctly. And uh, it's been quite a ride, I have to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, uh, like, how did you guys all come together? Did you guys know each other? Are you guys friends? Uh, how did it all uh, shape up? Uh, several people from the team were just left over from their first game, Fantaruk. And the rest of the team was just formed over the years when recruited, you know, one by one. Because the, the previous game was a 2D game, a 3D game, I'm sorry. So we had to switch to a 2D based, based team. We had to hire different writers because this game is much more story based and so on. So just the first several people knew each other and worked together on the game, but uh, a big share of the studio was just formed because that's the sort of people we needed. Cool. Um, so what inspired you to focus on the French Revolution? Because We the Revolution is focused on, um, I believe the year is 1789, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, 17, uh, 1794, yeah. Uh, well, my, my French uh, history is not... <laughs> I should uh, you know, I should know it since I, I just literally took a course in uh, world history and a section of a whole week was focused on the French Revolution. But my memory is uh, the older you get, the uh, you know, <laughs> the older, the harder the knowledge inside. You know, it's, it's a very difficult period to learn anything about because it's like five years where there's just so much packed into such a short time frame. And this is exactly why we chose this, uh, this period because the story we are telling is a universal one. It's not just the, something that could happen only during the French Revolution. It's about universal things such as how far you are willing to go to grab power, just how society reacts to such upheaval, like how much people are going to take and how much they are going to dish out if you put them to put them too far. And the French Revolution is perfect for this because, as I said, it's been five years, and during those five years, you could see the full spectrum of emotion, of all the social consequences of the things that came before and the things that would come later. Hmm. And uh, I know it's a very, uh, um, I would say, up it, there's a lot of upheaval during the French Revolution, and there's a lot of... Uh, I played the, the, the demo, and I was... Um, I, I I didn't last long. I think um, my whole total uh, uh, progress was like forty five minutes because I was trying to be the good guy and trying to make decisions. But I definitely went against the will of the people and uh, kind of met my end very quickly. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, what other what games did you, did you draw inspiration from when you decided to uh, design with the revolution? It, it wasn't exactly that we sat down and said, hey, we like this game and this game, let's make something like this. Everything about this game is story-based. We started with the story, we started with the characters, we started with the emotional tone, and everything from the style uh, to the gameplay was built around that. And once we step, uh, took a step back, we saw that, hey, this is something that people who like Papers, Please of This War of Mine are going to love. 
but it wasn't like we decided that we're going to work around those bases. Just we had the story, we made it, and it happens to be something that people who like those story-based games that explore a bit darker themes, usual, it's something that these people are going to like it. And so we took a lot of inspiration of media other than games, just, uh, you know, everyone in our studio is an artist in their, in their own right. So even if the programmers laugh every time we say it, I still insist that they are because they are problem sol solvers, they think out of the box. And it's not like I cannot walk, walk up to a guy that does code and say, hey, what do you think about this idea, you know, as a person? It's uh, it's very important to us that everyone in our team can contribute and say, hey, is this character acting like this? It would be nice if this de this detail happen happened. And uh, yeah. <laughs> The uh, so I'm, I'm kind of curious. So just coming off that, how many uh, like I know you're the art uh, lead, so you're in charge of the, uh, the mm -hmm. art style of the game. How many artists do you have versus how many programmers and um, what other staff members do you also have? Uh, the core team is like two artists and two programmers, and uh, two QA guys, uh, the director and the game designer, and everyone else. If they pop up, they are outsourced, and there's almost never more than two people on outsource at once. So most of the art was done by three people at uh, one point in time. Like it was me and the other artist, and we had one extra artist that, would, uh, artist that was doing character sprites or one that was doing all the court case icons. But it was never like uh, we had 10 artists at once doing all the work. It was always a very modest theme. Where, where did the inspiration for that art style come from? Because it's very unique. When I was playing a game, I mean, that was the first thing that, you know, I've noticed. And I, that's what I really felt um, was very, it was basically eye candy for me when I was playing. Thank you. Yeah, I, I was just, yeah, I was really stunned by just the animations, um, the art style. And um, so I, where, where did, how did that just come come to be? Well, it was research and in it, we just took a very long time to find something that worked because the very first prototypes of the game, like the very, very first con concepts were in pixel art, but it, it just didn't work. It didn't work for the story we wanted to tell. It didn't work to build this oppressive atmosphere that we wanted to show. And we just decided, okay, let's hit the books. Let's learn some art, art freaking history and see what we can, we can find there. And uh, we went through a lot of phases, but cubism caught our eye because you know, the, a big theme in our game is the absurdity of the times. Like how no no situation just has one facet to it. It's all, you have to look at everything, everything from several sides. And this absurdist uh, art style was just something that tonally worked. And even though our style, as it, as it shows up in, in the final product, doesn't look exactly like cubism, it had the same sort of idea behind it. That we want to show something that isn't fully obvious. It also works pretty well on the technical level because it works to unify a style, the styles of several different artists. If you had something more traditional, it would be much more obvious, for example, that this character was drawn by this person and this one, this one by the other artists. And since they are all overlaid with this, this same technique, it's immediately obvious that they belong together. So wow. it's, it works, you know, tonally, emotionally and uh, on the technical side. So it's totally worth all this work. All, the, all this time, <laughs> it's very time consuming, but it, it's worth it. It was yeah. a good decision and it took us a long time to reach it, like uh, half a year before we sat down and said, yeah, we're confident, let's do this, let's put in all this work. I'm glad you guys didn't go with pixel art because the, the current model, uh, current art style is just, it, it's beautiful and, uh, you know, j even seeing it in the trailer on Steam, I mean, that literally i mean that's what first kind of like sucked me in was the trailer it was just uh it, it had you know it, it had it kind of sucked me in immersed me and it and it got me very interested not only with the art but also with like uh the the the, the, dr the dramatic feel of it and that's why i was uh that's why me and uh, the historical gamer were just you know uh kind of immersed in it <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, a lot of people from our studio have backgrounds in different media. For example, we may have an artist that worked in not only games, but also in movies. The game director was uh, also a movie director. So the game itself has a very cinematic feel to it. 
And I have to agree with you. I'm also super glad we didn't go the pixel art route because like it, it would be cheap. It would be easy, but like at what cost? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we I, are just a bunch of masochists. I mean, uh, you know, pixel art is good in some games. Uh, I'm just thinking of like Terraria is a good game. Uh, but I feel like, you know, this one definitely, um, I think, I feel like a game is a work of art. You know, there are some games that I've played that look absolutely stunning and beautiful. And, you know, I, I, I usually compare some games like uh, Afghanistan 11. Um, it has some incredible visuals. And I usually compare, like, I usually compare these games to actual, like, works of art that you, you know, would go into the museum for. I feel like they both kind of work together, you know? Yeah, it is very important. And also, this is this our approach. We didn't want to make a cheap game. We didn't want to make a fast game. We, we sacrificed a lot to make this game as good as we can. And I absolutely agree that... Uh, I know that our video games uh, art is kind of a tired, tired argument <laughs> by this point, but I will always argue that they are as valid an art, art, form, art form as anything else. Yeah, because I... It's impossible to create something with a bunch of talented people who put their hearts in it, who would put in so much effort and hard work into it and not come up with something that uh, moves people. I, I feel like, honestly, like this is what people are, are uh, developing. Like when you make a game, you're uh, providing a piece of you into the world. You know, this is this is basically like your baby. Um, and, you know, one thing I really love is there are some games that, you know, have such an incredible um, uh, transformative uh, experience that people go back to it. Like uh, one uh, cool thing is that... Um, Matt was me and Matt were talking on the show um, a couple episodes ago about how he went and he replayed Sid Meier's Gettysburg, which came out in the nineties. I was still in high school and, you know, he went back to it and played it and he was, and he, he, he even enjoyed the art style that it was still going on with it um, and the gameplay and everything. And it's just amazing how, you know, how games have developed like that, you know, that, that they, they attain such a level that uh, they hold a special place in in a heart even decades later, and we go back to it just to play, just to get that 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 same feeling that we had when we first played it. Um, so, yeah. Um, w- one question I had is, what kind of decisions when the player starts playing a game? What kind of decisions will they encounter and have to make uh, while playing uh, We the Revolution? It will. I could say it will be divided into two things. Like one thing is day to day decisions. You just you mentioned that you had trouble surviving in, uh, in in the demo that you played, and it's just a sort of decision that you you see an accused person, you know he's a freaking asshole, and you have to let him go because if you don't, the audience is going to get up and kick your ass. So these are the sort of short term decisions that just to get get your you know get your day over, just just to, just to go on. You have to make decisions about this person leaves. I'm going to leave this person alone. I am not interfering in this fist fight because I know this is going to end badly. This sort, and the other sort is the more branching plot centric plot centric uh, sort of decisions, where you have to decide which enemy I am going to go after, or am I going to contribute to my family's well being, or am I going to go play cards like an asshole? <laughs> I, I noticed you have to. Uh, you can't be uh, so. It's the French Revolution, so I'm assuming uh, that, that that was probably like uh, my first uh, kind of mistake when I played the game was because I was trying to be a nice guy, and I remember running into a sequence where um, I was supposed to help out this. Uh, I'm not going to give too much away because I don't want to uh, spoil the story, but basically, um, uh, I was supposed to help out this person that is a friend of the family, and um, you know the people didn't like that. And they kind of put me in a really, really bad place because even though he was a friend of the family, and you know, like yeah. I. Would, or, um, you know, the people didn't like it and, you know, it's, it, it didn't work out for me in the end. <laughs> I think yeah. I around my neck. <laughs> um, this, this is the sort of story we want to tell because, uh, you know, we didn't pick this specific period in time to show that everything is fine and dandy and we're all cooperating. It was a terrible time. It was basically a test run of total, uh, totalitarianism. It was, uh, the French Revolution was, is cited by many historians as something that inspired the, the Soviet Union, in a way. And we want to show that this is the time when everything you do has political connotations, that everyone you meet is going to, is possibly going to be your enemy. This is the sort of oppressive atmosphere that we wanted to show, something completely new, a new kind of society that doesn't yet have all the tools 
to deal with what they, what they created. The atmosphere of the French Revolution was unique to its time. It might be unique to all of the history that we know so far. And this is what we wanted to capture. Like this first time in history when we, when we created totalitarianism. Yeah. Yeah, I felt, I definitely felt that. I felt like the ch- tension in the room while I was playing the game, you know, like I was very careful about which words, uh, which actions I took because, um, you know, you could see like there was a meter and it basically kind of, um, I could see the people turning against what I wanted to do. And I feel like if I chose a certain decision that it would just take them to the you know, far extreme. So, um, yeah, it, it's it, you. I definitely, when I was playing the game, I, I definitely felt that tension. I definitely felt that like my life was on the hands, even though I was, you know, um, a prominent figure in the game. Um, that my, that you know, all is on the table. You know, that I can go out just like you know, just like uh, you know anybody else. Yeah, it's it's the greatest irony of the time period. You know, that even though now everyone was supposed to be free, everyone was supposed to be equal suddenly the the climate was so hostile that you have had to mind your every single move you you were the people were not free they were suddenly surrounded by dangers that they didn't want and this is what we wanted to show like you're a free person you are of high social standing you have a lot of power and all of this can be taken in a snap every single step you make can be by your last one and this is what we wanted to show the players that you have to mind every decision you make so one question that I, uh, I was also thinking about, it would, would, he, would we see historical figures in the game, such as uh, one uh, personal favorite is Marquis de Lafayette. Uh, also, um, I'm not going to be able to pronounce this. Uh, we talked about it before the show. Maximilian <laughs> wrote, ro- you guys call him Rob in the studio. <laughs> I'm just yeah, gonna, good, uh, good old Rob. Ro- ro- yeah, we, we'll definitely meet a lot of historical characters. I cannot uh, reveal too many of them because... Uh, as, you know, as I said, the plot is the very center of the story, and uh, I cannot reveal too much without spoiling it. But we'll meet characters that are very well known, you know, the staples, uh, as they were, such as Robespierre, Danton, and so on. But there will also be a lot of less known characters that will pop up, pop up here or there. So the people who are fans of the, of the period will get, get a chance to see, uh, meet a lot of their faves. Okay. That, uh, I cannot promise you Lafayette, but I cannot, cannot promise that he's, he doesn't show up. It's a mystery. Uh, okay, I uh, that's gonna build a lot of suspense. Why? Well, well, well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, I'm a big fan of uh, Lafayette. I um, I work with the uh, National Guard a lot, and I didn't realize that the National Guard's name actually came from Lafayette. He actually coined the term of our National Guard. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, I, I didn't realize this. I mean, I was a big uh, fan of him because of his work in the American Revolution, but like that, he coined the term of the National Guard. Uh, like when I'm attached to units with the National Guard, I always uh, mention as like, "Hey, do you know how we got our name?" and kind of thing. So, um, yeah, it's it's really cool. I I, I really like that. Um, yeah, I love the guy. You know the saying, uh, "May you live in in interesting times" as an insult. Yeah, he lived in two different interesting times. Like uh, he managed to take part in two of the possibly more biggest upheavals in the history of, of his century. Like, give the guy a break. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember the first uh, first time he came to the U.S., uh, I think, like, when he first got here, uh, he was involved in his first battle. He, uh, the first battle he was involved in, he got shot. And it was just like, jeez, man, can't catch a break. Yeah, over here exactly. Battle, <laughs> like, jeez. <laughs> yeah, it's like always something with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I know him and Washington were really close, though. I know, like, they were, like, I think Washington considered him almost like a surrogate son kind of thing. Yeah. So, um, in terms of the game, when I was playing it, I felt that there was so many different possible outcomes in this game. Every decision that you take, I felt could have took me in a whole different, uh, you know, branch. So I'm kind of curious, how many possible outcomes are there for the game? <laughs> there are two different endings you can get. Okay. There's uh, the biggest differences are in the playthroughs in uh, themselves. They are randomized, randomized to uh, the degree. As you mentioned, you can one one time you can be doing much better because you got court cases that you could solve easily, or another time you spurred someone and then it was dragging you, dragging you down to like five solid days, which is a lot in this game. And uh, it's more about the journey than just getting a different cutscene at the end after playing this the same way. You Each time you have to put the ending in the context yourself. Like, what sort of person were you? Like, do you deserve what happened to you? 
And I know you have uh, in the game, you have a family. So that comes in. Um, you, you not only have to think about yourself, but the continuation of your family line. Yeah, exactly. Also, I have to mention that, you know, we are a pretty small team and we had to just make a decision. We could create a shorter game with branching and uh, a mas- much less concrete story. Or we could create a one one concrete story, but put all our heart into it. Like uh, there's so many dedicated assets, like the court court case characters, just themselves. There's one hundred one hundred and forty of them, and they are all custom made. They are not just randomized from elements. They are all drawn. They are all polygonized. They are all animated. There's like forty cutscenes. There's uh, I don't even want to count the events. Like a, a, every bigger court case has its own icons, and you know if you went for a more branching story, in one playthrough the player would seem so much less than that. We just had to choose because we unfortunately don't yet have the resources to m- make the story as big and as branching as we could dream. So we just bet all our money on telling the best single story that we could, and uh, we do believe it, it was the right decision. That we poured our heart into this, and it's just a much stronger core as it would be if we tried to stretch ourselves. You guys have been working on the game for um, about three years, right? Um, mm-hmm. I'm kind of curious. What's the most challenging aspect of designing and developing this game? If you had to choose one thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, for one, there's a lot of different gameplay mechanics that the player is going to encounter because, as I said, the gameplay grew around the story. It was meant to complement that. So it's not only varied, but we had to put a lot of effort to create a synergy between them so that the gameplay prop ups the story, that the story fuels the gameplay, and you can uh, so the players would immediately see that they are inter- intertwined. So that was a di- difficult thing from the f- production standpoint. It took us a long, long time to f- get it all just the way we, that we wanted. And as I mentioned, there was just so many assets to draw. There's just, just so much stuff to do. <laughs> in the game, uh, so I, I, I want to kind of like see if we could set up this setting. Uh, I don't, I don't want to like unveil too much, but um, is it possible that we can uh, mention the main character and his position? Or do you guys want to keep that part of the actual, uh, the, like the game? Do you, you want to keep that on the mystery? Yeah, so of course I can, can talk about Tim. Well... The player steps into the shoes of Alexis Fidel, a freshly minted judge of the Revolutionary Trib- Tribunal, and privately a huge mess. He's a father of two, a husband. He's also a drunk and a gambler who has a very strained relation with, relationship with, with his family. And now, on top of all, all this mess in his life, he's also given a very stressful, very responsible position that uh, at any second can result in him being dismissed or even killed. So you have to navigate a lot of stress. There's a lot of pitfalls you have to avoid. Okay, wow. Um, so that, that's, uh, yeah, I, I've, I ran into a lot of those pitfalls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, There's so many ways you can die in this game. Like, I could make an art book just, all, just of all that. <laughs> yeah, but I, 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 I got to admit, uh, the couple of times that I, di- I did die, I kind of enjoyed it because it was a unique way of kind of uh, me dying, with, especially with the life. <laughs> before with the art style but it was like <laughs> that was pretty interesting to see <laughs> yeah. uh so uh what other so besides uh we we put the setting there what other you can unique me- mechanics are we going to run into this game is it uh like are we we're we're basically like uh in charge of the tribunal uh or one of the tribunals so we're in essence like a judge um are we piecing the, like a court case together? How does that like? How does that frame up? Mm, a lot of our mechanics are made of elements that the players know. For example, you mentioned the courthouse. It's a kind of a blend of a visual novel, a bit of a mystery game, a bit of a resource management, and you know, you know, all those elements are something that you've seen. But the blend itself is uh, is what is unique. It's uh, it works together to create something that is uh, unique to our game. I cannot tell you about all the mechanics we have we have because as I mentioned synergy it's all about the plot the plot is important we cannot spoil you know you know the drill <laughs> but uh, most of our game is made of elements that uh, the p- people may know but combined in ways that you've never seen before or that are going to be completely new also what the main unique thing about our game is just that it's it's going to, be, it's to sound maybe a bit sappy, but it, it is made by us. You know, we are we are a team of artists. We are putting our best, and it just uh, is. 
it's impossible for something that is made by people who give it their best, who who all take care to add a little detail, details to make the game more real, more lived in, not to be unique. And so far, people have seem to be agreeing with us. Kind of uh, jumping off that, I, I noticed besides the art being beautiful, and we discussed this numerous times. Uh, one thing I also took away from the game was the uh, amazing music and sound effects. Uh, uh, so I was kind of curious, was that another key feature that you guys uh, focused on during development? It was treated the same as all the other assets, so we just kept kept searching until we found something that fit. You know, it it wasn't like, hey, this this track is like 80% okay, let's just leave it in. No, we took a long time, about one and a half years, getting all the tracks in the game. The final soundtrack should be about an hour. There's a lot of dedicated tracks. Like, there's uh, most important plot moments and cutscenes have either dedicated tracks. It's not like you have one for the courthouse, one for set, set scenes, one for happy scenes, let's go. It's uh, a solid hour of dedicated music. Yeah, I noticed in some of the cutscenes, uh, it was really... Um... There was a couple of scenes that uh, after it takes place during gameplay, and uh, it, it was very, I would say, unsettling because uh, it, there was a scene where, you know, I'm with family and uh, we're talking about um, some serious stuff, and you hear the crackling of fire in the back, right? There's no music, uh, but you, you have this like, that crackling of fire and the, the conversation, it felt so unsettling. And it, it, it immersed me more into the game because, you know, usually a lot of uh, development studios put in like a, like a background audio. This one had just this sound effect. And it, it made, it, it kind of basically transferred what you guys were trying to um, imply in that, uh, in that moment where uh, the main characters with this family. And I kind of felt a part of that. I felt like I was actually at the, that dinner table uh, discussing this odd uh, conversation about what was going on uh, throughout the day. And it just like incorporated me into, into that, into that atmosphere. And uh, I, I was just kind of stunned by it. And I <laughs> like, uh, I have to give you guys props for it because, um, you know, it, it, it's so simple, you know, you, you added like a crackling fire, but the way you guys kind of put it in there, you know, and the way you did it, it kind of, it kind of it, it not only it immersed me into it, but it had, added that feeling of something, something is odd, something is wrong, something is, things are not right, you know, like there's, there's something in the air, you know, kind of thing. So uh, I was just Really, uh, I wanted to, you know, kind of mention that because uh, I, I did take that away from uh, my uh, my demo. Thank you. I'm very glad that you noticed it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's one of those places where, for example, the movie background of our director shows because it's such a movie trick, right? Like it's not something that you see in a lot of games, but it's a, exactly something that you would see in a movie or maybe in a play. And this is the sort the sort of atmosphere that you wanted to show to, you know, use the entire arsenal to create emotional responses. And it, there's a lot of moments like this in the game, and I'm very, very glad that you that you enjoyed this one. <laughs> so if you had a, like, uh, you were mentioning how, how um, many cutscenes there are and how many decisions, H how long would the average single-player experience be for, you know, if, if you just, if somebody just brought this on Steam, how long would it take me for uh, to play out the whole game? It honestly very much depends on the play style. There's a lot of reading in the in the game. You have to you have you have to read the court cases. You have to make decisions. And you know some people breeze through breeze through them. They see him. Hmm, this faction is going to do this. If I do this, okay, let's just chop the guy. I don't care if he's guilty. And there's those who are going to read every court every court case. And it's yeah, that's it fl fluctuates wildly. Seriously, like it's it's not a super fast game. Uh, I think people are going to get good value for for their money because even now that we are playtesting it at, at work, it's uh, twenty hours is like a modest estimate. It, it's it's a long game and it also quite depends on how long you're willing to spend with each, each case. I think for me it'll probably be thirty or forty hours. I'm one of those people who have to read every little thing. I was actually during my demo, I was going through every little uh, scene right. <laughs> everything because like yeah i like getting all the information before i make a decision you know uh, i guess maybe if i was 18 or you know 19 i would probably just like click 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 yeah he's guilty, he's guilty. 
innocent. That guy looks good. Let me uh, make him innocent, you know, kind of thing. You know, it's, hey, that guy's well-dressed. He's probably innocent kind of thing. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm kind of curious. This is a very innovative engine. This is a very innovative artwork. Uh, so one kind of thought that I was running through my head was, what are the conflicts in history? Do you see this engine, this design, uh, a good fit for? Mm. To be honest, it's not exactly like we are going to sit down and say, hey, let's make We the Revolution, but in, in space. <laughs> no, it's, <laughs> we are, um, our core principle is always going to be the story comes first. So when we next we'll make our next game, those, the, this will be what we start with. It will be what kind of story we want to tell, what sort of emotional tone we want to set. And we are not going to take this engine and try to twist the story into it. But rather, rather than that, we are just going to build the gameplay and the style around what we want, want to tell, just like we, do the, we did with, with the revolution. So perhaps we might use one or two mechanics that are going to fit well, but I, we, I just don't think it's a shortcut worth taking. You know, if, if it's not going to be perfect fit, it's better to put in more work to f- try and come up with something else than to try and use something that worked just because it worked, you know, like... Uh, as I said, we are masochists. We are not going to take an easy way, even if it's uh, you know understandable. No, we want it to be perfect. We want the hard way out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Nothing is easy. <laughs> yeah, the, well, when you were talking about like um, earlier before, like uh, I, I don't know if we talked about it in the post show, uh, pre show, or actually during the um, uh, during the interview, but you mentioned uh, like the Russian uh, Revolution, and when I was you know as we were talking about this, I was kind of thinking, I was like, you know, this would be really like this system would really would really work for like the russian revolution you know especially like maybe after lenin died the kind of struggle between stalin and uh there was some other guy i forgot his name uh half the audience is probably saying it but i can't think of the <laughs> guy's name there was stalin Trotsky? yes there you go yeah him. <laughs> that, that would have been uh you know that would be really interesting so um um, the question I have for, and I'm, I'm, I know you guys are developing for Steam, and I know it's uh, for PC, but um, are you planning to add any future platforms in the future, or considering any future platforms like the mobile platform? Hmm. I, the PC and Switch are confirmed, and everything else is in the hands of the publishing gods. Like, uh, <laughs> I know that mobile is uh, a possibility if the game sells well. Oh. But I cannot promise anything beyond PC and Switch. It's just going, you know, as fate wills it. Okay. And so we are, we, are ho- we are hoping to bring it to as many platforms as possible, of course. Okay. Like it's, uh, we will do everything in our power so that as, ma- as many people can play it the way they want uh, as possible. So it's going to be on the Switch. Mm hmm. Okay. I might have to pick one up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big uh, proponent of like mobile gaming. I, I really love like I, when I when I go to work or I'm on uh, duty and stuff like that, and you know we're eating chow or something like that. I usually love getting my iPad or iPhone and you know firing a game up because um, I'm always on the go and I'm not home a lot of times to uh, you know play on my desktop. So um, uh, if you guys are putting it on the Switch, I might have to put that on my uh, to my buy calendar, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> Uh, so that, that that's really good to hear that you guys are considering mobile because uh, I'm a huge proponent of that. Um, uh, his, Matt will tell you. <laughs> we, we talk <laughs> all the time. I, every game that I play that I'm a big fan of, I always want it on the iPhone or iPad so this way I can play it wherever, whenever I am. Yeah, it's so convenient. I, I also love it. So that's pretty much all the questions I have. Uh, I wanted to, if I missed anything, do you have anything you wanted to mention or anything like that? Uh, there is one thing that I wanted to mention about the, when you asked about what sort of historical conflict, conflict we could use for this engine. Yeah. Well, to be honest, every single moment in history is interesting because there are always people living their lives, losing their lives, having their aben- appended. There was always something that people wanted, they could get or couldn't get. And I cannot say that, you know, this decade is interesting. Let's, uh, let's throw all the rest of the trash out because always in every story there's an emotional core and when there there is that core it doesn't matter if it's set in space uh, or in i don't know revolutionary france or in the medieval times because what you're looking for is something that you can relate to you know emotions that the people who live on the moon and the people who live in spain in the 13th century could feel so every 
it's not we can consider every single moment in history something that is worth looking into and meeting these people you know getting to know them that that that's a uh, so i'm i'm very excited to see what path you guys are going to take so because this is opening up a lot of uh curiosities now so you, <laughs> you guys are you know i i'm i can only imagine the the kind of uh periods of history you guys are thinking about I, i'm assuming you guys are already at, you know at your studio probably already uh projecting where you guys yeah are. We have a lot of ideas. It's uh, the biggest difficulty is going to be just to pick one, you know. <laughs> you know how it is with game devs like each of us has 20 ideas for a perfect game. It's uh, it's picking the one that is most most feasible and that everyone else agrees that is good. That is the hard thing. And the French Revolution is uh, the perfect first game for uh because everybody is interested in the French Revolution, you know. Uh, I know a lot of the games that I I play they actually do an um uh, a Napoleonic uh, French Revolution kind of uh, modification or DLC, and um, you know the French Revolution is something is very very attractive uh, moment in uh, in history because you know it was uh, when I was taking my college course they were talking about how the French Revolution was very different from every other revolution in history. It was a social revolution, and I, I was yeah. that, and uh, it was supposed to collapse the old system of you know um inequality in terms of uh, economics and um racial inequality and and um and financial inequality and all this and it's interesting to see how this was you know done it was supposed to bring the foundations of what we have with democracy but also a new social order and that's why i i find it very interesting to kind of study Yeah, I have to admit that I didn't know that much about it before I started working on this game, but I I just fell in love with the period. I I've read so many books about it. I've always uh, keep, I keep looking up references about it because I just I want to know more. It's fascinating for for all the reasons that you mentioned. It was something completely new. It wasn't switching up the the king, and, you know, installing someone else. No, they created something entirely new. One day they looked up at someone that was for all their in, all the intents and purposes god and they said no we are fucking done with him <laughs> it, it it was completely unprecedented you know the american revolution was precedent yeah but it didn't go in in the same direction as the french revolution did it was much more orderly it was much more uh, i don't know to say successful but it didn't end up the way the french revolution did you know, the french revolution is completely unique in all the ways and i've I just love learning about it. I want to. I want to know everything about it. I'm. I'm the same way. I one of the uh, pieces that I kind of want to um, kind of dive into is uh, I wanted to know more about Lafayette. That's actually what I, probably one of the next books I'm going to read is more Lafayette's um, contribution during the French Revolution. When I was in class, I was trying to find out more and more information from the professor about Lafayette's role. Um, but I, th- I think the reason why the American Revolution. Um, Because American Revolution, when you know we we separated from England, um, there was a movement, from what I understand, toward the end of the revolution to make George Washington king, and he was unlike any other, uh, I guess, politician of his day because he just wanted to go back to his home, back to his farm, and I think what shocked a lot of people was that he just decided he was given, like power to actually run an entire country to be king and he was like no i'm good i'm going back home y'all have to <laughs> and go back home and you know I, i it's very unusual for something like that to happen and i think that's probably what saved america in in, in one aspect because uh you know if he decided to just be king Uh, I think we would have went down a different path, but because he came back as president, and he was kind of, from what I understand, forced to co- uh, to be president. He didn't want to even be, go to the Constitutional Congress, um, to the uh, to the um, what do you call it? The, the I'm trying to my memory's uh, really shot, but he didn't even want to go to the Constitutional Convention. Uh, but he was kind of like not forced, but he they, it was a kind of like a sense of like trying to push him to do it and. You know, thankfully he did because uh, if he didn't go, from what I understand, we wouldn't have the United States. So, mm. uh, but yeah, that that would probably be. Uh, I'm. It would be that would be another nice period of time for you know maybe you guys to 
into because, you know, American Revolution, I know it's like, you know, when you look at strategy games, it's not, or, or RPGs, that's not like the most attractive period. It's usually the French Revolution or uh, World War One, World War Two, or uh, Russian Revolution kind of thing. It's most, well, you know, more, uh, I guess, attractive to a lot of gamers, but I'm a big fan of the American Revolution. So in the future, if you're doing that, you know, my, my thumbs up is for that one. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's all the questions I have. Um, and, um, I really appreciate you coming on the show. Um, thank you so much for coming on. I I'm really, really excited for this game to come out. I cannot wait. Uh, I recommend everybody listening. Uh, for me, this is a must buy just by the art style alone, but I got to play a, uh, an hour or two of this game and, uh, I thought it was incredible. So I can't wait. Thank to- you very much for inviting me and not to be sappy, but it, it means so much that you are so enthusiastic and it's just so great to see that. Uh, I, I just hope that the, the game lives up. Well, I played uh, about an hour or two of it and I can tell you that for the hour or two I've played, uh, I was totally enraptured with this game. So uh, thank you thank for you. that. I can't wait to get, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm so glad. 30 hours into this game. All right, guys, we will catch you guys in the next episode. We'll see you then. Bye.